Bible. <laughs> it's a miracle. Jesus and his disciples went all over Israel, showing everyone what the kingdom of God was like. Do you know how he did that? <laughs> oh, that's easy. By teaching them. Well, yes, but also by doing amazing, unbelievable, incredible, unimaginable things called miracles. Wow! But, uh, what's a miracle? Miracles are signs that show people how powerful Jesus is. Let me tell you about three of his miracles. One night, Jesus was on a boat with his disciples when... Oh no! A huge storm has taken over the sea! We're going to sink! We're going to die! What are we going to do? Meanwhile, Jesus was... Sleeping? Like a baby. So, one of the disciples said... Uh, excuse me? Excuse me, Jesus? Yes. What is it? We're all going to die! So, Jesus sat up and said... Hmm, why are you so afraid? Then, he turned to the giant storm and said... Stop! And guess what happened? The storm stopped. Wow! Jesus spoke to the storm and it obeyed him. Yep. Jesus was showing his disciples that in the kingdom of God, we have nothing to fear because... Jesus is the king of everything. Yes, he is. Another time, Jesus was surrounded by thousands of people who had followed him far away from town with no food to eat. Boy, am I hungry. Me too. Wish I'd brought a snack. Wish I'd brought two snacks. So, one of the disciples asked Jesus, Uh, excuse me, Jesus. Uh, how are we gonna feed all these people? Will this help? Five loaves of bread and two small fish? <laughs> Five loaves, two... <laughs> You can't feed thousands of people with this. Are you sure? Hmm. But Jesus took the boy's gift and prayed over it. Then he started breaking pieces off and giving them to the people. And then there were more pieces. And more pieces. And more pieces. So many pieces that... Look! Every person got to eat as much as they wanted. Another miracle! The disciples must have been so surprised. Oh, they were. Jesus was giving them another sign. In God's kingdom, there is always enough. Enough food, enough warmth, enough love. Because Jesus is the king of everything. You're catching on. And another time, a desperate man ran to Jesus saying, my daughter is sick and dying. Can you please help her? By the time Jesus got to their house, the little girl had died. Oh, no! But Jesus said, Don't worry. She's okay. And the little girl came back to life, just like that. This was a sign that Jesus is king over sickness and disease. Jesus is the king of everything! Yes, he is. In the kingdom of God, there is no sickness or death. People must have been so excited. Oh, they were. But not all of them. Who wouldn't be excited about the miracles? I'll tell you. The religious leaders, the Pharisees. <laughs> We keep track of all the rules, and we're not excited at all. Yeah, Jesus is getting too popular. Some people even call him a king. We gotta do something about this. So, the Pharisees went to the Sadducees. 
We're the ones in charge of punishing the people that break the rules. Let's talk. <laughs> the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't like all the amazing miracles Jesus was doing. How could they not be amazed by the miracles? Because they were too afraid Jesus would take over their jobs. Jesus is the king over everything. That's right. And God was about to use him to do the most incredible miracle of all time. Really? Yep. So the Pharisees and Sadducees began looking for a way to arrest Jesus to stop him from doing the work his father had sent him to do. Marcia, there's flowers in the studio. Isn't it great? Ah, spring flowers make everything feel fresh and new. They also make for a fun game of Marsha Coco. Marsha! Coco! Marsha! Coco! Marsha! Coco! It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, a family of prawns with a message about Easter and our friend Fruitcake with tips for finding hidden eggs. Now, our hosts, Coco and Marsha! It's Palm Sunday, everyone! Time for a parade! A parade? Ooh, I love parades! Confetti, floats, candy! Well, there's no candy on Palm Sunday. But when Jesus entered Jerusalem, everyone waved big palm branches. Were the palm branches made of candy? I don't think so. But palm branches are a sign of royalty. And Jesus was, and still is, the King of Kings! And guess what? Today, we have actual palm branches in the studio. The Frond family is here. The friend family? The Frond family. I think you're saying friend funny. Our friends are a family of fronds. A palm frond is the same thing as a palm branch. Oh, so where is this friendly frond family from? Florida. Here's a clip. Wish I could wave like that. Maybe they can teach us. Let's ask. Oh man, we're out of time already? <sighs> Appreciate you being here, Franz. And Fruitcake, we're pretty fond of you too. I see what you did there. I'll talk to you all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. It's game time. Get up on your feet and play along. Let's play. Freeze dance. When I say freeze, you stop dancing. When I say dance, you dance around. Ready? Dance. Freeze. Dance. Freeze. Dance. Freeze. Dance! Freeze! Dance, 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 dance! Yay! Stop and go! When I say stop, you stop moving. When I say go, you move around. Ready? Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go, 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 go! Yay! Where's Max? Can you find Max somewhere in this picture? When you do, call it out. Ready? Go! Nope, not there. Not there either. Not as easy as it looks. Hey, Gabe. What are you doing? I'm heading east. You know, for Easter. Huh? Let's talk about Easter. Easter. 
A lot of people celebrate Easter with bunnies. I'm a bunny! And chocolate. Mmm, I love chocolates. And painted eggs. Oh, so pretty. But Easter is really about how much God loves us. When Jesus came to the world, he came for a reason. He fed the hungry, healed the sick, cool. and even brought some people back to life. Cool! But when some people heard that he was claiming to be the Son of God, they didn't like that. And so they arrested him. <gasps> Why? He didn't do anything. It was actually all part of his plan to pay for our sins. Sins? Sin is when we disobey God, like when we do something wrong. And just like when we break the law, there are consequences. Romans 6.23 says, When you sin, the consequence is death, but God gives you the gift of eternal life. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. Huh? What did he do? After they arrested him, his own people demanded that he be put to death. They nailed him to a cross where he died. And he took the punishment that we deserve for all the bad stuff we've done. But thankfully, that's not the end of the story. Phew! Three days later, some of Jesus' followers found his tomb empty. But an angel appeared and told them, He has risen! Romans 5.10 says, For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So, if we choose to follow Jesus, God forgives us for all the bad things that we've done because Jesus took our sons away. Now that's a reason to celebrate. Yay! Can I still wear my egg costume? Easter time is so much fun. Eating ham and hot cross buns. Chicken and bunnies lay chocolate eggs. Wait, wait a minute. But bunnies don't lay eggs. Well, where do they get them from? Do they buy them? Where do they get the money from? You know what? I think it would be better if they had ham. You know, like honey roasted ham, smoked ham, prosciutto, bacon. What about roast beef? What? What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, Happy Easter. Ah! Mailbag. Welcome to Mailbag, where I read the questions that you guys have sent in. Okay, let's see what we've got here. If you were a superhero, what powers would you have? Let's see, hmm. Well, if I could run really fast, that would be cool. Definitely wouldn't have to worry about being late for class. Or the power to gain knowledge by sleeping with a textbook under my pillow? Oh man, I would know so many things and I wouldn't have to study. But I'd probably just sleep with comic books under my pillow. Either way, I'd be super rested. Dear Micah, do you like meatballs? Well, I, uh... <gasps> I was a meatball once! Oh, hi, Gabe. And you were a star, and then you were the star, and then we sang a song about meatballs, and I sang flat, and it was terrible! Oh, you know what else I like? Well, to answer spaghetti. your question, and, and I'm not crazy about meatballs. meatballs but the spaghetti was sardines and the meatballs were olive. Oh boy, I'm hungry. Dear Micah, what's your favorite Bible story? I really like the story of David and Goliath. Oh, I like that one too. When the big giant was mocking God and little David heard it and was like, oh no, you didn't. And then the king was like, hey little guy, put this on. And David was like, oh, that's too big. So he went out to find the giant and he won using only a slingshot. Wow, what a story. Yeah, that's the one. I like that one because it shows us that when we rely on God's strength and not our own, we can overcome giants that seem impossible to beat. It's like what Jesus said in Matthew 19 verse 26. With people, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So you mean to tell me that with God's help, I can stuff 100 marshmallows in my mouth and say chubby bunny? I don't think that's what it means. Anyway, I think it's time to look at some fan art. Hey, that's me. Look at all these pictures. Oh, wow, that's a cool one. I like your colors. Oh, look, there's Chet. Ooh, he looks mean. Mmm, <laughs> sardine sandwiches, my favorite. Ow. Hang on, Gabe. Didn't you forget something? Oh, right. I forgot radishes. Yum! Uh, no. He means you didn't say grace. You know, like prayer. I'm confused. How do I pray for a sardine sandwich? Why would God want to hear about that? Can I talk to God about anything? Should I book an appointment? Do I need a megaphone? 
Should I do a fancy cartwheel wearing a funny hat? <laughs> Can I pray to God even when I'm singing flat? Don't worry about it, Gabe. It's easy. Yeah, no sweat. You whoa, don't need whoa. to spin around till your stomach gets upset. You don't need to read a script or speak with fancy words. God hears what's in your heart. So tell him your concerns. You can pray for those you love, like your friends and your family. But don't stop there. You can pray for ah. your enemy. Anytime is fine to bring your problems big and small. Give each and every one to him. God cares for, for them all. all. Pray. Because he's listening. Even when you're whispering, pray. He'll give you peace within. Pray, 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 pray. pray. Any time or place. In each and every case. Pray to, to help, help you run, run the race. race. Pray, 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 pray. Now that I know that praying is easy, I'm going to pray to God about everything. I'm going to pray to God for everything. When the milk's expired, toast on fire, and I got a bee sting. Ow. When it's early in the morning or in the afternoon, I know God will hear my voice even under. at the park or in a trash can on a mountain underwater with a yellow briefcase God can hear my prayers in outer space in space where there's no oxygen no one can hear you God can pray it'll help you grow pray when the answer's no oh. pray trust the Lord he knows pray 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 pray, 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 pray. pray. when you sing a song pray, pray. when the loading's long pray, pray. when you spell Pray, 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 pray. When you're feeling smug, pray. pray. With your favorite mug, pray. Pray, 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 pray. pray. Ephesians 6.18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. In Jesus' name, Amen. Mailbag. Welcome back to another episode of Mailbag, where I read the questions that you guys have sent in. If you had to choose between being a sock or a chair, which would you be? Interesting question. Well, the good thing about being a sock is that they come in pairs, so I definitely would have someone to talk about how smelly our owner's feet were. At least until one of us got lost in the laundry. But maybe that would be better than someone's butt in my face all the time. No! So, I would say sock. Fiona asks, Who is your best friend in the whole wide world? Oh, that's an easy answer. It's obviously me. I mean, I'm cool, we have all the same hobbies, Hold and... Hold on. What makes you so sure about that? I help Micah with his homework, I keep him out of trouble, and I'm overall a better influence on his character, which makes me the better friend. Better influence? <laughs> Well, I'm more fun. Well, I'm hey more... now, there's no need to argue. You're both my best friends. <sighs> yeah, yeah right. right. What do you mean, yeah, right? Come on, Micah. We all know you can't have more than one best friend. So which one is it, Micah? <laughs> Me or Lydia? Well, um, uh, my best friend is, well, uh, Jesus. <laughs> that oh, is not come fair. on. That's the Sunday school answer. Well, let's look at what the Bible says. John 15, verse 12 to 15 says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. Jesus laid down his life for us and took our sins away. I think that makes Jesus the best friend you could ask for. Plus, he can walk on water, raise the dead, make the blind see, the deaf hear. Okay, okay, we get it. Jesus is pretty cool. That seems like a legitimate answer. Now that we've got that sorted out, I'm wondering. Who's your second best friend? It's me. No, I'm the second best friend. I'm the most secondest best friend there is. I'm nicer. I'm cooler. I'm smarter. I think it's I've time to see some That's fan art. Count for something. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I can do a handstand. Whoa. -ho -ho. That's a cool drawing. Hey, that's me. That's cool. 
cool. Wow. And now, Dennis rounds about sandwiches. My name is Dennis, and I like to say I eat lots of sandwiches every day. Ham, salami, roast beef and pastrami, turkey veal meatloaf, Reuben and bologna, BLT, grilled cheese, chicken and a deli, chicken panini, I like salad is okay, pepperoni and cheese, PB&J, tuna, sandwiches. That was Dennis Raps About Sandwiches. Mailbag! Welcome back to another episode of Mailbag. Let's get into it, shall we? Stephanie asks, what's your favorite food? Easy one. My favorite food is pizza. Does someone say food? I'm assuming there's sandwiches nearby. Uh, there's no sandwiches here. Well, that's disappointing. I should probably stick around, you know, just in case some sandwiches show up. Okay, next question. Lucas asks, what's your favorite meal of the day? Ah. Okay, another food one. I think lunch is my favorite. Unless the lunch lady is serving that green mush that kind of smells like sweaty socks. Ugh, I still don't know what it is. What about you, Dennis? See, that's a trick question. How can you compare breakfast to lunch? On one hand, you have breakfast, bacon egg sandwich, lunch, turkey bacon sandwich, and dinner, bacon club sandwich, with extra bacon. It's bacon wrapped apples and oranges, really. Boy, am I hungry. Do you like Brussels sprouts? Yuck. Yuck! I'm still hungry though. Are you sure you don't have meat and cheese stuck between two slices of bread? Sorry, no. But that reminds me of a verse I read recently. John 6.35 says, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now that sounds like some good bread. Sure does. Jesus is saying that just like bread, when we come to him, he will fill us up and give us what we need to keep going. Hmm, that's a good point. When I'm hungry, which is pretty much all the time, I have some bread, and I definitely feel better. Plus, I can't make a good sandwich without bread. I mean, it's the bread that holds everything together. Without it, things just fall apart. Exactly, Dennis. I think you just shared a great lesson on how Jesus works in our lives. Oh, I did? Well, uh, I mean, of course I did. I wasn't talking about sandwiches at all. Uh, why don't we, uh, why don't we check out some fan art? Wonderful. Hey, that's very cool. Great job. If you would like to send me your question, send me an email at micasuperblog.com. That's it for now. See you next time. Here's a quick story in a form of a rhyme About a Nazarene who turned water into wine I'm the bread of life, Jesus said Disciples stood confused, scratching their heads When it comes to life, you need more than food Something even better, that's, that's the gospel, gospel truth. truth You need the Son of God The King of Kings Who lived a perfect life and died for your sins But don't you worry, he didn't stay dead He rose from the grave, now you can have some bread Of life so come to Jesus, he'll make you whole. Fill your cup and, and feed, feed your, your soul. Word. Mailbag. Welcome back to another episode of Mailbag, where I read the questions that you guys have sent in. Dear Micah, what do you like most about having your very own vlog? Thanks for your question, Levi. Um, I think what I like most about having a vlog is being able to say what's on my mind and share it with all of you. Hey, baby! What are you doing? Reading your baby diary? It's not a diary. I'm reading mail from my fans. Ha! You have fans? You should see my fan mail. There are thousands of Hans fans. Uma, bring me the fan mail. Dispensing mail. Look, my guy, how much mail I have! <laughs> Hans, are you okay? Performing Heimlich. Oh, thank you, Uva. You will always be my Edelweiss. Um, on to the next question. Dear Micah, what's your favorite verse? Let's see. Hmm. Oh, I know. Right now, my favorite verse would have to be Luke 9, verse 25. What good is it if someone gains the whole world, but loses or gives up their very self? Now, I don't know if you know this, but at school, I'm not very popular. You got that right. You are what is called a dweeb. 
See what I mean? And you don't have the very latest in fashion clothes like me. Okay, okay. We get the point. When I read this verse, it helps remember being popular isn't what's important. What do you mean? Being popular is everything! Do I have to remind you how much mail I have? What I mean is, when we focus only on fame and popularity, we can forget that our relationship with God is the most important thing of all. Well, you do that, and I'll focus on all of my mail from my adoring Hans Fans! Just don't huh? choke huh? on the envelope huh? again. Huh? I've got so huh? much huh? mail! <laughs> <laughs> Why does this keep happening? Um... I think it's time to see some fan art. So beautiful. Oh, the color is so vibrant. I love me. Oh, look at this. Oh, they got the hair so good. If you would like to send me your question, send me an email at mikeysuperblog.com. That's it for now. See you next time. Hans Fans! Hans Fans! Welcome to Hans Fans, where all my adoring fans send me mail because I'm the best. Dear Hans, you are so smart and rich and have cool things and everybody wants to be like you because you are so cool. Love, Hansel. P.S. This isn't from yourself, aka Hans. P.S. P.S. You have nice hair. Ah, well, that was very nice of you, Hans. I mean, Hansel. I agree with all that you said. Next question. Guess what? Chicken butt. What? What? Who wrote this? <laughs> Why you? <laughs> Hans Fons! Hans Fons! This has gone to your head. Remember, pride always comes before the fall. Whatever. Have you ever read the story of King Nebuchadnezzar? He was so full of pride, he even built a statue of himself. You're just jealous. And besides, it's not like I'm making a big statue of myself. One big statue of self for, uh, Mr. Micah Superstar. You know, people who think too highly of themselves sometimes do some pretty crazy things. Just like King Neba Nobly Nibble Nibble some scissors. That's King Nebuchadnezzar. Medical sweater? Nebuchadnezzar. Let's just call him Nebby for short. Have you heard of King Nebuchadnezzar? It's a story of a man who thought no one could be better With his heart full of pride He never saw it odd That it's wrong to ask people to treat you like your god He thought highly of himself and said What could be better than to build a big statue of King Nebuchadnezzar? Right. He said Bow to my statue To his people in all earnest If you fail to bow down, you'll be thrown in a furnace But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to go Hi. refuse to bow down to the statue made of gold what are you mad you will bow to my statue never said you can run but you know we will catch you we won't run they replied we have nothing to fear we know god will save us and our conscience will be clear we won't worship you or your gods or anything no god but our god and that is that oh nebby king Fine, tie them up, turn the furnace up to seven. seven. Throw them in the fire, see if help comes from heaven. Now before you all say this story isn't fair, shouldn't God save his people when they bow to him in prayer? Well, God showed up, made the people all stare. They looked into the furnace and saw four people there. Their jaws all fell and their eyes grew wide. Nebi said, oh look, the son of God's inside. Come out of the furnace, your God must be real. Yeah. The three men were fine and no fire did they feel. Nope. With the change of heart, Nebi made a decree that all people worship God and not bow down to Nebi. If not, I will beat them up. I'm going to make them pay. Black eyes and wedgies are the order of the day. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, that's not very nice. I wouldn't do that. King Nebby went crazy, but soon came to his senses, gave his life to God. That was the general consensus. Hey, I, I, got, I got a rap too. My name is Dennis, and I like to eat sandwiches. And, what, it's the song over already? Well, that's it? <laughs> it's a miracle! 
Jesus and his disciples went all over Israel, showing everyone what the kingdom of God was like. Do you know how he did that? <laughs> oh, that's easy! By teaching them! Well, yes, but also by doing amazing, unbelievable, incredible, unimaginable things called miracles! Wow! But, uh, what's a miracle? Miracles are signs that show people how powerful Jesus is. Let me tell you about three of his miracles. One night, Jesus was on a boat with his disciples when... Oh no! A huge storm has taken over the sea! We're going to sink! We're going to die! What are we going to do? Meanwhile, Jesus was... Sleeping? Like a baby. So, one of the disciples said... Uh, excuse me? Excuse me, Jesus? Yes? What is it? We're all going to die! So, Jesus sat up and said... Hmm, why are you so afraid? Then, he turned to the giant storm and said... Stop! And guess what happened? The storm stopped. Wow! Jesus spoke to the storm and it obeyed him. Yep. Jesus was showing his disciples that in the kingdom of God, we have nothing to fear because... Jesus is the king of everything. Yes, he is. Another time, Jesus was surrounded by thousands of people who had followed him far away from town with no food to eat. Boy, am I hungry. Me too. Wish I'd brought a snack. Wish I'd brought two snacks. So, one of the disciples asked Jesus, Uh, excuse me, Jesus? Uh, how are we gonna feed all these people? Will this help? Five loaves of bread and two small fish? <laughs> Five loaves, two... <laughs> You can't feed thousands of people with this. Are you sure? Hmm. But Jesus took the boy's gift and prayed over it. Then he started breaking pieces off and giving them to the people. And then there were more pieces. And more pieces. And more pieces. So many pieces that... Look! Every person got to eat as much as they wanted. Another miracle! The disciples must have been so surprised. Oh, they were. Jesus was giving them another sign. In God's kingdom, there is always enough. Enough food, enough warmth, enough love. Because Jesus is the king of everything. You're catching on. And another time, a desperate man ran to Jesus saying, my daughter is sick and dying. Can you please help her? By the time Jesus got to their house, the little girl had died. Oh, no! But Jesus said, Don't worry. She's okay. And the little girl came back to life, just like that. This was a sign that Jesus is king over sickness and disease. Jesus is the king of everything! Yes, he is. In the kingdom of God, there is no sickness or death. People must have been so excited. Oh, they were. But not all of them. Who wouldn't be excited about the miracles? I'll tell you. The religious leaders, the Pharisees. <laughs> we keep track of all the rules. And we're not excited at all. Yeah, Jesus is getting too popular. Some people even call him a king. We gotta do something about this. So, the Pharisees went to the Sadducees. We're the ones in charge of punishing the people that break the rules. Let's talk. <laughs> 
The Pharisees and Sadducees didn't like all the amazing miracles Jesus was doing. How could they not be amazed by the miracles? Because they were too afraid Jesus would take over their jobs. Jesus is the king over everything. That's right. And God was about to use him to do the most incredible miracle of all time. Really? Yep. So the Pharisees and Sadducees began looking for a way to arrest Jesus, to stop him from doing the work his father had sent him to do. Marsha, what are you doing? Spring cleaning. Where'd you even get this stuff? Oh, here and there. I've never seen you wear any of it. Well, for some reason, floating around in hot cocoa all day, I never get cold. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Stone, the Super Slam Rockwell, with a message about miracles. And our friend Fruitcake with exercise tips. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha! Happy Easter, everyone! Before we get to our hard-hitting interview, Stone the Super Slam Rockwell has challenged me to see if I can roll him over. Ooh, what do you get if you move him? I get to pick the music for the end of the show. But if I can't roll him over, then he chooses one of your songs? Do you really have your own music? Oh yeah, rock and roll. Amazing. Okay, let's do this. Are you ready to roll, Fruitcake? Okay, in three, two, one. Look like a challenge. It is. I could use a miracle right about now. Oh, oh, you know what you remind me of, Mr. Stone from the Super Slam? Can I call you just Stone? You remind me of the big stone they put in front of Jesus' tomb when they buried him after he died on the cross. It was really hard to move, too. But when Jesus' friends went to see him, the stone was rolled away. <clears throat> How did they move it? Asking for a friend. They didn't move it. And if you think that's amazing, get this. Jesus wasn't there. <laughs> oh, that's right. The Bible says Jesus' friends found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they looked inside, they didn't find him there. Yep, Jesus had risen. That was the biggest miracle. He was alive again and is still alive today. That is amazing. You think you're amazed? After Jesus' friends left, they saw him walking along the road. They were so surprised. Jesus had risen. He had risen indeed. Are you okay? Maybe we should roll to a clip. Oh, right. Rolling! Whoa, you're really rolling. That's rock and roll if I ever saw it. Looks like we'll be hearing that Marsha song after all, Mr. Stone. Tell us, what's the secret for getting you to roll? Oh man, we're out of time. Thanks for being here, Stone the Super Slam. And Fruitcake, appreciate you reffing. We really wanted to hear about your exercise routine. See you all next time on Coco Talk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to my song? Planet, Marvel, towards the Lion of Stone. The Midday Show. It's game time. Get up on your feet and play along. Let's play. Freeze dance. When I say freeze, you stop dancing. When I say dance, you dance around. Ready? Dance! Freeze! Dance! Freeze! Dance! Freeze! Dance! Freeze! Dance!
dance, dance, dance. Yay! Stop and go. When I say stop, you stop moving. When I say go, you move around. Ready? Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go, 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 go. Yay! Where's Max? Can you find Max somewhere in this picture? When you do, call it out. Ready? Go! Nope, not there. Not there either. Not as easy as it looks. Hmm, there he is. You found him. Jesus and his disciples went all over Israel, showing everyone what the kingdom of God was like. Do you know how he did that? <laughs> oh, that's easy. By teaching them. Well, yes, but also by doing amazing, unbelievable, incredible, unimaginable things called miracles. But, uh, what's a miracle? Miracles are signs that show people how powerful Jesus is. Let me tell you about three of his miracles. One night, Jesus was on a boat with his disciples when... Oh no! A huge storm has taken over the sea! We're going to sink! We're going to die! What are we going to do? Meanwhile, Jesus was... Sleeping? Like a baby. So, one of the disciples said... Uh, excuse me? Excuse me, Jesus? Yes, what is it? We're all going to die! So, Jesus sat up and said... Hmm, why are you so afraid? Then, he turned to the giant storm and said, Stop! And guess what happened? The storm stopped. Wow! Jesus spoke to the storm and it obeyed him. Yep. Jesus was showing his disciples that in the kingdom of God, we have nothing to fear because... Jesus is the king of everything. Yes, he is. Another time, Jesus was surrounded by thousands of people who had followed him far away from town, with no food to eat. Boy, am I hungry. Me too. Wish I'd brought a snack. Wish I'd brought two snacks. So, one of the disciples asked Jesus, Uh, excuse me, Jesus? Uh, how are we going to feed all these people? Will this help? Five loaves of bread and two small fish? <laughs> Five loaves, two... <laughs> you can't feed thousands of people with this. Are you sure? Hmm. But Jesus took the boy's gift and prayed over it. Then he started breaking pieces off and giving them to the people. And then there were more pieces. And more pieces. And more pieces. So many pieces that... Look! Every person got to eat as much as they wanted. Another miracle! The disciples must have been so surprised. Oh, they were. Jesus was giving them another sign. In God's kingdom, there is always enough. Enough food, enough warmth, enough love. Because Jesus is the king of everything. You're catching on. And another time, a desperate man ran to Jesus, saying, My daughter is sick and dying. Can you please help her? By the time Jesus got to their house, the little girl had died. Oh, no! 
But Jesus said, Don't worry, she's okay. And the little girl came back to life, just like that. This was a sign that Jesus is king over sickness and disease. Jesus is the king of everything! Yes, he is. In the kingdom of God, there is no sickness or death. People must have been so excited. Oh, they were. But not all of them. Who wouldn't be excited about the miracles? I'll tell you. The religious leaders, the Pharisees. We keep track of all the rules, and we're not excited at all. Yeah, Jesus is getting too popular. Some people even call him a king. We gotta do something about this. So, the Pharisees went to the Sadducees. We're the ones in charge of punishing the people that break the rules. Let's talk. <laughs> the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't like all the amazing miracles Jesus was doing. How could they not be amazed by the miracles? Because they were too afraid Jesus would take over their jobs. Jesus is the king over everything. That's right. And God was about to use him to do the most incredible miracle of all time. Really? Yep. So the Pharisees and Sadducees began looking for a way to arrest Jesus, to stop him from doing the work his father had sent him to do. It's game time. Get up on your feet and play along. Let's play. Freeze dance. When I say freeze, you stop dancing. When I say dance, you dance around. Ready? Dance. Freeze. Dance. Freeze. Dance. Freeze. Dance! Freeze! Dance, 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 dance! Yay! Stop and go! When I say stop, you stop moving. When I say go, you move around. Ready? Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go, 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 go! Yay! Where's Max? Can you find Max somewhere in this picture? When you do, call it out. Ready? Go! Nope, not there. Not there either. Not as easy as it looks. Hmm, there he is! You found him! Yeah! <laughs> 60 Second Bible Stories, Episode 1, Creation Today's verse is Genesis 1-1 In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let's wind the clock back, right to the beginning. There's no computers. No school. No parents. No cars. No animals and no trees. Nothing, just God, and he decides to get creative. Now, the earth was formless and dark. And on day one, God said, let there be light, and pop, it appeared. He then called the light day and the darkness night. 
Day two, God creates the sky. On day three, it starts to get really exciting. God creates land and then covers it with loads of grass, plants, trees and bushes. Day four, he adds the sun, moon and all the twinkly stars. And on five, he fills the sea with fish and the air with birds. Day six, he makes all the animals. Cows, sheep, rhinos, creepy crawlies, lizards, tigers, giraffes, monkeys. Yes, I think they get the idea. He also made something very special, us humans. On day seven, he puts his feet up and has a little rest. <sighs> a good job done. Let's talk. What did we learn? What did God create on the first day? What did God do on the seventh day? Let's pray together. Let's thank God for his gift of creation. What else would you like to thank God for today? Adam and Eve. Today's verse is Genesis 3.23. So the Lord God sent them out of the Garden of Eden, where they would have to work the ground from which the man had been made. So after God created the world, he made the first human. His name was Adam, and he lived in a beautiful garden made for him by God. In the garden, there were lots of trees. And God told Adam that he could eat the fruit from any tree except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And if he did, he would die. Adam does as he's told and things go well. God gives him the job of naming all the animals. Uh, Rhinoceros and then decides to make him a special friend. God put Adam into a deep sleep, took out one of his ribs, and made a woman. Her name was Eve. Things went swimmingly until a nasty serpent showed up. He tricked Eve into eating the forbidden fruit. And she gave some of the fruit to Adam. They then became rather aware they were naked, so made clothes out of fig leaves. When God came to speak with them, they hid. Yes, that's right. They tried to play hide and seek with God. He soon found them, and Adam mm. told him what happened. God cursed the serpent for his trickery and kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden. Let's talk. What did we learn? What did God tell Adam and Eve not to do? How do you think they felt when they left the garden? Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? Noah. Today's verse is Genesis 9, 12 to 13. The rainbow that I have put in the sky will be my sign to you and to every living creature on earth. It will remind you that I will keep this promise forever. Imagine if God asked you to build a boat. And not a small boat, a really big, massive boat. It'd be pretty mind-blowing. I mean, where would you start? Well, that's what happened to Noah. Back then, the world had become a pretty messed up place. God even regretted making man. So he decided to destroy everything with a great flood. But Noah found favour with God. And he told Noah to make a huge ark. A kind of cruise ship, but not so luxurious. Anyway, he did it. Noah then took his family onto the ark just as God commanded. God also sent pairs of every kind of animal, creepy crawly and bird onto the ark. Then the flood came. The waters rose so high they covered the tallest mountain. Everything died. But Noah, his family and the animals were safe in the ark. After months of floating about, the waters stopped rising and the ark landed on a mountain top. When the waters had gone, God gave the command and they all left the ark. He then promised to never flood the world again and put a rainbow in the sky as a sign of that promise. Let's talk. What did we learn? What did God ask Noah to do? What do you think it would have been like to be on a boat with all those animals? Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? Noah. 
Moses. Today's verse is Exodus 3.12. God replied, I will be with you, and you will know that I am the one who sent you when you worship me on this mountain, after you have led my people out of Egypt. God's people, the Israelites, were slaves to the Egyptians. But God had a plan to rescue them. He commanded a man called Moses, via a burning bush, like you do, to go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. After a bit of convincing, he set off along with his brother Aaron. They asked Pharaoh, but he said no. Not really a surprise. So God began a series of plagues to convince Pharaoh to change his mind. First, he turned the water in the river Nile into blood. Then sent a plague of frogs. Followed by a plague of gnats, then a plague of flies, a plague to the Egyptian livestock, and a plague of boils, then the biggest hailstorm ever, followed by locusts and then darkness. But Pharaoh still said no. A tough cookie to crack. So then God killed the firstborn son of each family, except for those that had put the blood of a lamb over their doorway. Finally, Pharaoh let them go. So Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. God even divided the Red Sea so they could escape. God had saved his people. Let's talk. What did we learn? What did God ask Moses to do? How did God lead his people out of Egypt? Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? David and Goliath. Today's verse is 1 Samuel 17, 47. Everybody here will see that the Lord doesn't need swords or spears to save his people. The Lord always wins his battles and he will help us defeat you. David was a young shepherd boy who looked after his father's sheep. His three oldest brothers were away fighting the Philistines with King Saul. One day, his dad asked him to take his brother some food. When he got there, he found the armies lined up ready for battle. He then saw a huge man coming out from the Philistine ranks. His name was Goliath, and he was their champion. He shouted out a challenge. He wanted a one-on-one -on -one winner-takes-all fight. But the Israelites just froze in fear, and no one would fight him. Well, except for David. David told King Saul that he would fight Goliath. But Saul said no, he was too young. David was used to defending his sheep against lions and bears. So Goliath didn't scare him. Saul gave David his armour, but it was a tad on the big side. So instead, he took his staff, sling and some stones and went to face Goliath. As Goliath started to approach him, David ran forward, put a stone in his sling and flung it at the giant. The stone hit him in the forehead and Goliath dropped down dead. God had given David a massive victory. Let's talk. What did we learn? Why was David at the battlefield? What happened when David fought Goliath? Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? Daniel and the Lion's Den. Today's verse is Daniel 6, 27. God rescues and saves people and does mighty miracles in heaven and on earth. He is the one who saved Daniel from the power of the lions. Daniel was a servant of King Darius. The king liked him and decided to make him the leader of his whole kingdom. The other leaders weren't really a fan of this idea, so hatched a plan to get rid of Daniel. They went to the king and asked that he make a new law. One where no one was to pray to any god or man except to the king. If they did, they would be thrown into the lion's den. Ouch! The king agreed and the law was passed. The leaders knew that Daniel wouldn't stop praying to God. And they soon caught him in the act and told the king. He was upset, but couldn't go back on his word. The plan had worked. Daniel was arrested and thrown to the lions. The next day, the king went straight back, removed the stone lid and called no, out to no. Daniel. And Daniel replied. 
God had sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth. There wasn't a scratch on him. He was lifted out of the den. And Darius had all the men who had falsely accused Daniel thrown to the lions. Who gobbled them up? He then made it law that people should fear and revere Daniel's God. Let's talk. What did we learn? Why did the king have to punish Daniel? What happened to Daniel when he was in the lion's den? Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? Jonah. Today's verse is Jonah 2, 2. When I was in trouble, Lord, I prayed to you and you listened to me. I begged for your help and you answered my prayer. Nineveh had become a pretty wicked place. And not in the cool sense. One day, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and tell them to stop being naughty. Jonah refused and ran away. He got on a boat and sailed for Tarshish. So God decided to use a bit of gentle encouragement and sent a huge storm. Which almost broke up the boat! The sailors were petrified and started lobbing the cargo off the boat. Meanwhile, Jonah was having a snooze below deck. The captain woke him up. And they all drew lots to see who was responsible for the calamity. Jonah got the short straw. And tells them to throw him overboard. The sailors didn't want to kill him, so they tried to row back to shore. But God cranked up the storm, so in the end, they had to do it. In he went, and the storm stopped. God then sent a massive fish to swallow Jonah. While inside, Jonah prayed. God heard him and got the fish to spit him onto dry land. Jonah went to Nineveh, told the people to repent, and they obeyed God. Let's talk. What did we learn? What happened when God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh? Why did God make the big fish spit Jonah out? Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? Minnow Laughing Grill Bible! <laughs> it's a miracle! Jesus and his disciples went all over Israel, showing everyone what the kingdom of God was like. Do you know how he did that? <laughs> oh, that's easy. By teaching them. Well, yes, but also by doing amazing, unbelievable, incredible, unimaginable things called miracles. But, uh, what's a miracle? Miracles are signs that show people how powerful Jesus is. Let me tell you about three of his miracles. One night, Jesus was on a boat with his disciples when... Oh no! A huge storm has taken over the sea! We're going to sink! We're going to die! What are we going to do? Meanwhile, Jesus was... Sleeping? Like a baby. So, one of the disciples said... Uh, excuse me? Excuse me, Jesus? Yes, what is it? We're all going to die! So, Jesus sat up and said... <sighs> Why are you so afraid? Then, he turned to the giant storm and said, Stop! And guess what happened? The storm stopped. Wow! Jesus spoke to the storm and it obeyed him. Yep. Jesus was showing his disciples that in the kingdom of God, we have nothing to fear because... Jesus is the king of everything. Yes, he is. Another time, 
Jesus was surrounded by thousands of people who had followed him far away from town, with no food to eat. Boy, am I hungry. Me too. Wish I'd brought a snack. Wish I'd brought two snacks. So, one of the disciples asked Jesus, Uh, excuse me, Jesus? Uh, how are we gonna feed all these people? Will this help? Five loaves of bread and two small fish? <laughs> Five loaves, two... <laughs> you can't feed thousands of people with this. Are you sure? Hmm. But Jesus took the boy's gift and prayed over it. Then he started breaking pieces off and giving them to the people. And then there were more pieces. And more pieces. And more pieces. So many pieces that... Look! Every person got to eat as much as they wanted. Another miracle! The disciples must have been so surprised. Oh, they were. Jesus was giving them another sign. In God's kingdom, there is always enough. Enough food, enough warmth, enough love. Because Jesus is the king of everything. You're catching on. And another time, a desperate man ran to Jesus saying, My daughter is sick and dying. Can you please help her? By the time Jesus got to their house, the little girl had died. Oh no! But Jesus said, Don't worry, she's okay. And the little girl came back to life, just like that. This was a sign that Jesus is king over sickness and disease. Jesus is the king of everything! Yes, he is. In the kingdom of God, there is no sickness or death. People must have been so excited. Oh, they were. But not all of them. Who wouldn't be excited about the miracles? I'll tell you. The religious leaders, the Pharisees. <laughs> We keep track of all the rules, and we're not excited at all. Yeah, Jesus is getting too popular. Some people even call him a king. We gotta do something about this. So, the Pharisees went to the Sadducees. We're the ones in charge of punishing the people that break the rules. Let's talk. The Pharisees and Sadducees didn't like all the amazing miracles Jesus was doing. How could they not be amazed by the miracles? Because they were too afraid Jesus would take over their jobs. Jesus is the king over everything. That's right, and God was about to use him to do the most incredible miracle of all time. Really? Yep. So the Pharisees and Sadducees began looking for a way to arrest Jesus, to stop him from doing the work his father had sent him to do. <laughs> 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 